Alright, welcome back. In front of you, I hope you recognize the Schaefer PFM. And I will say that on screen, as I'm looking at my camera, that red, the maroon red, really pops. In real life, it's a little more dim, so I'm actually a little, a little bit jealous of what you're seeing compared to what I see. But, I think I mentioned trying to do one of these a while ago. It's similar to the snorkel, because it is a snorkel filler but there are a couple little things that just make it a little little different um there we go i have a little bit of inkiness on it because i did do a couple things just to pre undo it and let's see so let's just dive into it this guy i'm going to show you the taking apart process i'll do the cleaning and polishing off camera because you know i've so many videos on that now and if there's anything i th think of I'll jump back on camera at times to to talk about it but I think this guy's actually fairly straightforward and I will say that um, to restore these guys you can go to Anderson pens or uh, probably independence I guess my go-to's and there are little kits to have the right size sack they have the point seal and they have the little gaskets all sized right for these larger PFMs right so let me go ahead and take it apart We'll do the cap back there, and just like the regular snorkel filler, the body just comes right off. And here's the part that I pre-did. It's actually, here we go. This is the part that should be coming off, right? So imagine this is still in the barrel, actually. We'll get that lined up, and I'll explain that in a second. But this should all this should not have come off yet this is all kind of the front so screw off the barrel just like typical there will be ooh interesting okay there should be a little spring not quite the same spring as the snorkel filler this is usually thinner this is shorter and let's see i actually forgot my screwdriver on the other side but just like in the snorkels there's going to be a little screw you can use a flat top to kind of get back in there and lefty loosey righty tidy and that should pop out and i may run and get it just so we can do it all to completion here is your snorkel that slides right out and of course just like the other ones it's going to have this kind of groove channel with one two three four kind of marks for these little guys that go around and that's going to give you your sliding track and the part that i did here this is a major difference i think between the snorkels and the pfm but there's this extra little connector that kind of keeps a few things in place up here in the hood i'll call it and maintains the little catch ring for the the cap that's going to catch onto these little knobs that peek through but you can do a couple things. Oh, there goes my stand. One second. You can do a couple things. You can do the classic hair dryer method, and you can just kind of grab this and hair dry and slowly expand, break down some of the glue that's in here, and it'll come out. Um, you could also, and I think this is how Grand Mia does it, Steph from Grand Mia, he has a little, like a thick piece of wood that he's whittled down to be able to fit into this space and that allows you to have a nice channel um, so that if you need to grab this you have it's going to compress against the wood and not cave itself in if you accidentally squeeze too hard and for this guy which is why it's all wet and inky on my hands i did the hot water soak method so this plastic will resist a good amount of heat so i had a cup of water heated up for 60 seconds let this sit there in the hot water and the water cooled and that allowed some expansion, um, got into the glue a little bit, and I was able to just, after one soak, twist it right out. Lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. So now let's go ahead and unpack the front of this. So I'll call this the connector. I don't know if this is a proper term, but that went ahead and pulled out this guy. This is the catch ring, I'll call it. Just this little notched out ring that slides into the into the hood and has these little guys poking up for the cap to catch on. And then apparently there's also this little metal ring that's going to help maintain the insides of this. And so let me grab my dental pick. Just reach over the camera for a second if I can see. There it is. 
pick out a few things. So in here, I guess you could either pick it out, or maybe we can go the other side. And we can also try to push it out. You should be able to push, but maybe, oh, maybe I should have done a little bit more. Let's see. I might have to do this off camera and just trust me that you can pull. But there's a gasket in there, and that's what I'm trying to hook with my dental pick right now. But I'm trying to hook the gasket so I can pull these things out. Because the gasket I'm going to replace. But this guy is tight in there. So maybe I do have to do a little soaking to loosen up some ink and get him out. Ah. I was hoping for a good clean video this time. But... Yeah, there's always something. Yeah, I'm not getting it. So, two things you could do. Either do what I'm doing, I'm going to soak, soak, soak again, and I'm trying to hook in here and pull out. There's also, you could take a piece of wood, and let me see if I can have a little dowel. I had a dowel just a second ago. Let me see if I can push him out. Let me scoot him out a little bit, so... Uh, the smaller one. Mm, nothing super handy, but boy, that one's a bit rough. I'm going to have to do him off camera. Let me see. Does this fit? Hang on a sec. No, not going to do it. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm going to work on. I'm going to work on getting. There it is, got it. Haha. -ha. So what I did instead is rather than go in the center of the gasket, I just kind of pushed on. I'll show you. Yeah, there we go. So imagine this were in there. So rather than trying to go in the in the middle, hook it and pull it out, I kind of just went to zoom in for you. Kind of had my tip and I used this side to kind of get just to the inside, pushed down to indent it, and hooked it and pulled it out. So that's what I did. So that's what we're looking for, because that is now holding in these, a few seals. There we go. This is the point gasket that I was trying to hook. It's just a piece of rubber. And let's see, this one is a little, a little flexible, but it's starting to feel a little stiff. Um, this would probably be usable. But with the kits, you get one of these, so I'm just going to ditch it and let the, let the thing be completely brand new. And that will allow you, and you can take a little dowel, a little stick, to push out what is essentially the feed. This guy. Big fat guy at the bottom. Tapers up to the top. And that is it. So it's going to be... And I guess I'll reiterate later, but a um, little feed, a new gasket, this little metal piece that's going to hold all that together. And that will be held in by this little guy, this, this little extra ring that's going to go on our connector. On which is going to go our little clutch. And that's all going to seat itself in there to keep this little hood, hood as a unit. So... Let me get all this messy stuff away. And I will show you one more thing. So we have this, and I discovered that I could reuse a, a tool that I've, I've recommended before for shapers that I actually like using it for some of these vacuumatics now. So just like the snorkel, not, what did I just say? Yeah, I use this tool for the vacuumatics, or not vacuumatics, but the vac fillers, but I'm finding that I have an application for this. That's what I should say. So if you recall, just like with the snorkels, we have our kind of channel guides, these larger ones, but in between there's usually some kind of little crimp that's going to hold our kind of snorkel nipple in place. So just like usual, you can go through and just at the crimps, just try to open up ever so slightly. Not too much, just enough to kind of feel it move so that you're not digging into the little rubber nipple here. Let me do a little bit. And then what I found 
is especially for the snorkels. This guy, this little thing that has the female end that you can push pull the vac filler rod through the barrel of those vac fillers, fits nicely up into here. You can snake it all the way up and just kind of get it slightly off center so you're not trying to push this out. But I have used it several times and I really like it. Let's see if I can move my camera as a way to pound these out. And this one I'm going to have to actually do my crimping a little bit, but it's nice. So it's, it's straight up and down. I can get it up in there and do a few pounds, but I didn't uncrimp this one enough. But that's what I'm going to do for that. And I'm going to gently, gently, gently go back through and just ever so slightly undo those middle crimps just enough that I feel it's off the rubber and pop it out. So that I'll do off camera. I will do actually, well, yeah, let me do it. It's just, I know exactly where my screwdriver is. So we'll be back in just a second. And we shall stick the screwdriver down the barrel, catch the screw. Did I get him? Ooh, I feel like that's going to be a rusty screw. I can feel it. Oh. Yeah, there's rust in there. Got to clean that screw off. Let me do it up from behind the camera. Come on, my friend. This guy might have a little bit of corrosion on top because like, I'm not really sliding into the screw like I usually do. I will take my little light, see if I can peer into it and see what I see. Yeah, it's just rusty in there. It's just going to take me a second to find the tip. But if it were that easy, I would do it on camera, but man, this guy is not wanting to be found. Wow. Yeah. So I'm not going to keep you online for that. So what I'm going to do is do the same thing, get that screw out and there's going to be that same little, um, little cutout at the bottom of this that's going to hold a seal and I will use my dental pick or the sewing needle just kind of pick and peel it out so that we can replace it with the proper one but I think that's it sorry I couldn't get that apart in front of you but I will go do all my uh, micro meshing do my polishing get it cleaned up and then yeah, we can do the resacking. We can kind of replace that. We'll repack and show you all the seals that go up here. We can do the seal down here and just kind of show it again on camera to get everything together. And then we'll just do a little bit of a writing sample and go from there. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so just a quick update. Um, it's been a little bit of time, maybe about a week or so. But this red one had a lot more issues with it um, than I thought not more but just a very fairly significant one so when I commented earlier that there was some rust in here I was not wrong so I was able to take my light look in there and the top of that little screw this little guy that's meant to hold you know all this assembly at the bottom together um, super rusted could not see the slit where to put a screwdriver so what I wound up doing, rather than I, I took some picks, tried to pick at it to get, get it off just a manual way, I took my gold plating machine and I set up a little electro cleaning situation and that allowed a lot of that rust just to be eaten off and come away. But again, when I was finally able to see down at the barrel and I think I got pretty much all the rust off, the slit, there's just so much corrosion that there's nothing to catch on to with a screwdriver. Um, so I think what I'm going to wind up having to do is get a long enough drill bit to be able to just slowly drill that 
that he head off and see if I can maybe just unscrew the base. So that's going to take a while for me to find the piece I need. I just have to get myself down to the hardware store and, and fiddle around with it. But it also had me look at this a little bit closer and you might not see and I'll try my best real quick. But there are a couple, there's a little crack right there and I think there's one here. So this thing was a little more beat up than I thought so there are a couple little cracks on it. I don't think they're going to impact, yeah there's another one right there, there's like three, one, two, three cracks. So I don't think it's going to impair the functionality, I'll see what happens when I get this piece off and I'll see if maybe I can uh, do some, what's it called, like some acetone welding or something to see if I can stabilize those a little bit. but. This is going to turn into a longer um, project pen that maybe, you know, I'll just do what I can and I'll keep it for myself. I'm not going to pass something that cracked on to somebody else. But, set this one aside. And so I turn my attention to the black one. Oh, here's me trying to change my camera angle. So, I just laid it out. I mean, I took it apart just like the other one did. Nothing special. I mean, everything was as I hoped it would be. You know, this is the part that I'm struggling with now on the other one, trying to get this little screw out that holds on the knob, and it came, this one came out nicely. And everything else is as we saw. We've got the feed, the little rubber uh, washer gasket. We've got the metal kind of washer to hold everything in place that gets held in by this connector, which has our little catch ring on it, and all the stuff that goes into the barrel. Of course, the hood will capture all this. We have our snorkel feed. It's going to go back into this little chamber, dude. And, of course, our cap. And the cap on this one, I may have pointed out earlier. This one seems to have a little bit more wear compared to the other one. Definitely um, well used, well loved. And we'll see how it polishes up. But this is not going to be the most pretty one we've ever seen. But it'll do the job. And the thing I want to do is like why show you all this just because I think the befores and afters are actually kind of nice to see kind of see how well something cleans up and here's the barrel lots of light usual wear I don't really see anything in terms of big scratches I don't see any feel any big breaks here we've got this nice little scrape down here and I think on this one the only markings we're going to see I thought it said Schaefer somewhere. I may be mistaken, but I may have to take a loop. But maybe not. I'll double check because sometimes I think on some of these you might have Schaefer's here, but I might be wrong. And this one I'm, I seem not to find it. So this will be a good barrel just to really go to town on and polish. But I'll double check with my loop just to make sure I'm not going to go over something. And this allows me one last chance to kind of let's take a look at this together. Again, kind of beat up, but all the facets are there. I'm not seeing any cracks in the tip. Mm. Plating's intact, and of course we'll just double check the hood just to see if there's anything major that we can catch with our eyes. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything, no cracks along here. The nib is firmly seated and adhered. So I think we're in a good spot to go ahead and complete this one. So I just wanted to show you the before um, so we can see the after polish and see, just see how well it cleaned up. But I'll go ahead and take a break and next time we come back we will have the black one all nicely polished and ready to put back together with the kit. The PFM kit that you can put together or buy as a kit and we'll go from there. So sorry for the interruption. We'll see you next time. And welcome back. I think everything is polished up. I have it all kind of laid out in front of you, but I thought I'd take a second just to kind of show what a little polishing can do. Because if you remember, that thing was pretty beat up and, you know, usual wear, scratches, and dull. But, you know, this is why we do what we do, or at least I do what I do. Um, put a little elbow grease into it, a little bit of time, and make these 70, 80, 90 year old pens look almost like new again and granted the cap I mean it has its issues you know but it shined up well and we can go over this one a little bit more with the full show of the pen but I thought I would just kind of give a quick preview about how things 
kind of went with just the shine up and everything looks really good I, I must say and then of course don't forget to use the q-tips and um, the little hard to reach areas even under the nib get that polished up as well do all the little things you need to do and we'll just show off the little end piece if I don't drop it we'll show it off here as well so much to focus on ah, maybe you'll see there we go but yeah there's so much it's trying to focus on but even the knob turned out really well so let's go ahead and zoom back out yeah there we go and let's think about how we get this thing back together and I guess I'll start off with what's in this PFM pen for men repair kit I got this one from vintagepens.com you can probably get them from Independence or um, Anderson pens as well uh, don't quote me on it but I'm probably pretty sure but if you wanted to put it together yourself and you had some a place to get point gaskets or washers or whatever um, this is what you could do because what's in the kit is a sack which should shouldn't have grabbed that one first but it is a size 17 sack I don't know if you can see it but there you go size 17 a little too big for 16 a little smaller than 18 so the nice 17 size sack is what you need and if we have the little washer seal for the vacuum we find that it is about one centimeter so 10 millimeters one centimeter so outer diameter if I can hold it is about one centimeter so if you're looking for um, individual pieces that's a centimeter and the point gasket which is really just a piece of punched out rubber with a hole in the center is about two millimeters in thickness and then when you try to get the widest diameter it is about I'm gonna call it maybe just shy of nine if you get nine you can probably file it down sand it down and get the size that you need but it's right at nine millimeters if you want to make your own uh, point gasket oops there we go all right so what should we do first let's see if we can go ahead and get this sack cut down and it's a bit of a thing because these things um, can be tight to get into these sack protectors right if you get 16 you're down a little bit too small so you're losing some incapacity if you go too big clearly you're not going to get in here so um, there's a couple ways to do it and let me show you kind of one messy way to do it and then I'll I'll show you what the the shortcut is so if I get a lot of talc on this sack because it's going to be a tight fit I'll need the lubrication I'm going to get the talc on it I'm going to give it a little bit of a stretch, hold it for a few seconds, try to get some of that memory out of it. Just to kind of narrow it down just a little bit. And it's not going to do much, but I think it does something. It kind of starts itself in there. And so I have these little dowels that I can use to kind of push it all the way down in there. And to kind of help myself, I do put on the dowel. I stretch it out just a little bit, just to make it a little bit thinner get it down in there and I let it kind of re relax back to normal and so I feel like there's still a little bit of stretch like it didn't quite do what I needed so I'm going to stretch it back down a little bit get it all the way down it's hitting the bottom and then let it come back down and then if it relaxes I still get a little bit of a stretch. It really doesn't want to go all the way down. Um, so what I wind up doing, if I pull it out just to see where it's at, visualize it, at from the top, at the crimp section, definitely have a big gap. If I take it down past the crimp section, it gets just about to the bottom. And that's almost what I want. Because what we see here is if we take the snorkel, put it over the crimp section the nipple actually starts just where and maybe I should zoom in for this one there we go the crimped in section so the nipple really starts just about where this 
kind of divot is, right? So if I at least kind of get the sack as close to the bottom as I can, give myself a little bit, like a millimeter of not quite to the bottom, and I grab right there, that's about where I really should be cutting. And the real trouble with these PFMs is getting the sack and the sack protector because there's such tight tolerances, it's actually really hard. And I'd be interested to know how they really got it in there back in the factory days. But I'm going to get my thumbs. I'm going to get my scissors. Squeeze this super flat. Get this as perpendicular as I can. Clean cut. That still didn't. So, got a little bit of cleaning up to do. Let me just get that little bit of wickedness off there. There we go, that's pretty good. Just flatten out the top. Okay. I'm okay with that one. Okay, so here we go. So I have what I think I have. It's down here. It's going to be just where the nipple is, so I might have a little bit just off the bottom, but it's going to be so stretchy and tight that I'm okay losing just a little bit off the end. I'm okay with that. And maybe somebody who's done this decades more than I have has a little bit of a different idea, but that's kind of what I've come to settle on. So let's go ahead and get our shellac. We'll get the sack on the nipple. Just kind of let that cure a little bit. I mean, we'll still be doing a little bit of something to it. But we'll we'll do this and we'll move on to the front section. So I'm just going to put some shellac on this nipple. Here we go. Get that out of the way and I think I'm done with that. And this one just easy peasy slips right on. I'm going to give it a little bit of a twirl. Spread that shellac. Anything that slips out, I'm just going to take my finger, press it in there, get it back into that gap, and that should be our sack. And that's actually pretty nice and level. That was a good cut. And let's get this off to the side. Let's pack that nose cone. Oh, what do we have? We have we have our our feed, our point gasket. Our little metal piece that's going to keep the point gasket in place. Let me see if I can reposition and do some zooming in. And we're going to have our little grease. Get that out of the way. So I'm going to take a little bit of grease on my finger. I'm going to more or less on the outside. I'm not going to just smear it on. I don't want to get it around that inner hole because that's where the um, snorkel is going to go through. And I don't want anything in there to kind of get into the tip of that snorkel and clog it up. So right now, I'm really just kind of putting that around the periphery. Set it off the side. And I'll take my nose cone. Maybe I should zoom back out. And I will try my best to line up, pre-line up. So I'm going to lay this kind of downward. Lay my feed downward. And that's the easiest way for me to visualize what I'm doing here. And I'll just lay it in there and push forward. And it pretty much lines itself up. I can do a little bit of English, a little bit of adjusting on there. But it lines itself up pretty well when you do it that way. There's the lineup. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take my point gasket that's been off to the side, gonna lay it in there, and really just tamp it down. Let some of that grease on the outside just kind of catch the feed, and then the grease on the other side is going to take this and catch it a little bit. Just a little bit of an extra seal. Tap it down. Beautiful. Now I'll take the, the catch ring 
the clutch ring, whatever you want to call it, the catch ring, I guess. I'll lay it down in those holes and put that down for a second. And I, I think I've said before, I'm not a big fan of using glue because I kind of want people to get back to, into them. I don't want the struggle of fixing them again to risk damaging them. So I'm going to take a little bit of grease, put it back into this connector. And if you'll notice, there's a fat part and a little narrower part. The narrow part goes towards the nose cone. So I've got that in there and I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to do my little trick, kind of come backwards to let it seat and then righty tighty letting it go all the way down and I'm just going to finger tighten it and that should do it I've got some greasy things so I'm going to clean this up in a bit but that's the nose comb easy and the hard part at least my hard part has kind of always been at least over the camera putting in this little rubber gasket to make the seal for the vacuum so um, I might try it over the camera for a few seconds but if it doesn't work out I'm not going to force it or keep you on for very long so since this is a slightly bigger barrel than my other ones my uh, usual snorkels I found that this the back end of this exacto knife slips up and is actually a pretty good fit this is what I'm going to use as my backstop to bring it back just behind where that little groove is that this sits in and use that as a backstop and then slide that in and use just one of my little wooden tools that I've come across just to kind of push it in. And I will say that, you know, I'll spend a few minutes on this while I talk, um, but if I can't, I'll do it outside the camera. But there have been times when the gaskets, I've forgotten to take them out. So this one was a nice white uh, gasket. It was clearly obvious that it was in there. But there have been a few times when I guess I'd forgotten whether or not I'd taken this gasket out. And they're hard to see if they're black um, in there. And I would spend 20, 30 minutes really just trying to get this O-ring in. And I couldn't do it. And suddenly, finally it dawned on me to double check whether or not I actually took the old one out. And sure enough, I had not. So if you ever get to the point where this thing is not going in, not going in, reconsider that. Make sure you did what you were supposed to do and get a free space for this to slide into. And it looks like I'm having trouble trying to look over the camera and do it. So I'm going to go ahead and take a pause and come back when I have the O-ring in place. And sure enough, within a minute of getting out from behind the camera, or, yeah, taking it behind the camera, I was able to get it in. So, not too bad. This is going to be the most fiddly part of, you know, you're going to figure out how you like to do it, how it works for you, and you'll be able to get it in. So, this one, not terrible, just can't seem to perform in the moment. But let's see, what else do we have left? So we have the hood done. We have this ready, so what we really need to do now is get the sack in the sack protector. And I'll tell you a couple things that I've learned, because the issue with this is such a tight fit that you're going to put all kinds of talc on this, hoping to let it slide in. Rarely is it going to happen, but this thing is not quite stiff enough to kind of let it push in. So what I wind up doing, and this may be uncouth, but... I use this end to either one, blow air in to keep this tense and let it push itself in, or probably more often, I use this end to suck it, collapse, and it kind of doubles up on itself and it allows me to push it in, let the air back in, and it re-expands. And I try to get it to the point where I can start this in there so that I can just kind of finish the job and use a little bit of pressure and pop that in. So I'm probably going to go ahead and try, oh, let me get the talc on first. But what I'm, I'm going to do, the one that usually works for me, is I'm going to suck the air out, collapse it, and see if I can slide it in a little more easily. So that's what my goal is. And of course, the other thing I'm kind of keeping in mind is, I mean, this came out a certain way. There are little divots in here where you can 
previously see the crimps. So as I put this in and semi line it up, I'm going to try to keep that in mind so that it fits in into the grooves as much as it can. So I'm going to go ahead, go off camera, put my lips to this, collapse the sack, see if I can slide it in as much as I can. Okay. So I'll take a second. If it takes too long, I'll stop the camera again. And it worked. Yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy that you have to do this. I really wonder how they did this in the factory, but it's in there now. It's just seated, so it's going to be able to be pushed in there. And the other thing I can do, because you can kind of see the powdery sack through this hole, so I can take my mouth, put it over this, provide a little suction to make sure that this is sucked back and not just crumpling in on itself. And I don't think that tends to be an issue, but I'll do it real quick. There we go. Maybe it did something, maybe it didn't, I don't know. But I've used that trick as well to kind of like do a pulling force while I try to push this in. So it kind of works both ways. And now I think, I think I've got it pretty well lined up because there's, there's, let me zoom in. So I was trying to be conscientious because there's, there's a crimp. There's a little divot into it. So I th think I have them pretty well lined up. And there's kind of like the track where the other, th this little, um, I still don't know what to call them, but these flanges line up. So I think I did a pretty good job. So I'm going to kind of start it in. And what I do at this point is I need to use some downward pressure. So I pull back in my knockout block and kind of do what I said before. Kind of find a small hole that will support the nipple and really just kind of walk it down walk it down just kind of wiggle and walk and I might have to take it off camera just to do to be able to get the get the pressure down but let me let me just do that from behind the camera real quick set in there again. Now I'm just going to see where I land, how much I have to recrimp by putting it in to here and just seeing how it rubs. And by lining the feed, that little, this is a little bit tight, so I know I need to do something. And actually found, let's see, and by all the other thing is that by lining up the crimping and the and the and the I don't know flanges I'll call I'll keep calling it that allows you to know that you're not just putting this in willy nilly so that it's going to line up at some point when you rotate this around to find which grooves you need to put it in. There we go. Find it. You will be able to find that you're going to line up your breather tube with the hole. Another reason to keep that in mind, you don't want to just stick it in there willy-nilly, you want to find out where it was crimped before so that you can get the same alignment and it will kind of find its way, there we go, into the feed channel and lay where it needs to lay. We found it. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do this off camera, but I'm going to go back and just kind of recrimp in between just so I, I don't get it scraping the inside of my hood. So I'm going to do that off camera and then we'll come back. And here we go, all crimped in place. And I was able to find that, yep, we did a good job. And when I kind of just preemptively just kind of get it started, we find that it does line up quite nicely. It's pretty smooth in and out. So we didn't over, over undo our crimps and then just a little bit of pressure allowed our crimps to be put back into place. So overall, so far, good repair. Let me zoom out and make sure I'm able to finish up. And so aside from just kind of wiping down all the greasiness that I started with, everything should be pretty much good to go. So let's um, 
to the final touches, and then we'll let it set up. Dang it, I need to get a level for my desk. And then we'll do the writing sample. So what we have left to do is get this part in, this part in. And of course, I don't think I showed you one of the, I love doing these for some reason, but I even shined up the little screw, just like shining up those brass buttons on the button fillers. There's something about doing the little bitty things that just really makes something pop. And even though you're never gonna see this screw again, um, I still like doing it and I don't know why. So we will go ahead and get our grease again. We'll put a little bit of grease on this end part that's going to just slide through, push the rest of our grease along the length of this thing. And use our favorite tool, whatever tool you want. We're going to drop that down and we're going to get that going through our new seal. Yeah, a little bit of resistance, which is good. Yeah, you can hear the pop, so it's got a good seal. And then, oh, hang on to that. I'm going to see, ah, I almost had everything. I need to get my screwdriver, but I'm gonna drop that down. Sometimes I get lucky and it just kind of shakes its way under there. Other times I just need to kind of pre-start it with the screwdriver and, nope, not gonna be lucky this time. I'm gonna need the screwdriver to kind of help start it, but, I'm going to go down and get my screwdriver, and then we'll be back. So, yet again, a pause. So, boom, screwdriver in hand. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out how to do this a little bit smarter. See if it works this way instead. Nope, maybe not. Maybe I am just going to have to do my do my drop method over and over again until it finally works, but. Or. Can I do the balancing act? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Um, nope, I cannot. All right. What if I do something even stupider? Let's try a different iteration. Let's see if I can, besides doing all that. There we go. Let's do it this way. Catch my flathead area, and then push it through that way. Yeah, that works. And then we'll take this, and again, I don't like, I can sometimes do the shellac, sometimes I don't. Yeah, because this is a twisty knob and this is easy enough to get off. Let me go ahead and do the shellac. Now my hands are greasy. I'll just do a touch. That's all. Nothing more than that. I'll put that in there and tighten it down. Finger tight. Yeah. Hope you can hear that air. Yeah, got a good seal. And then the next thing you can do, let's go ahead and plop that spring. It should catch on that little uh, collar. And if I don't drop it and break everything, we just slide that in. Actuates nicely. And let's see. We should be able to just line up. Oh, one last thing. Here's where I put the grease on this. A little bit, couple little things here. So I wind up putting grease on this, but behind. So it's going to lubricate the channel it goes through. And then I'm going to put some grease on the crimp section, just like that. So I can lubricate the channel without getting grease in the snorkel itself. I can line up my snorkel and then slide that on. Give it a few little 
strokes and the barrel should slide on and since I'm just getting everything greasy I might as well put a little bit more just for sake of getting a seal on these threads there we go let me wipe off my hands we'll wipe off this thing for a second we'll see if it actuates and, and does what I hope it would do okay okay let's see tighten her down and there we go uh oh what's not going right here so what I have here is my snorkel is still a little bit out and I think I know what just happened but let me see if it'll self-correct because I think I know what happened a little bit ago yeah gonna undo it what I believe happened is this came up because I felt it I think I felt it come up a little bit because it didn't seem as high up as it sh as it was before or it seemed more high up now than it was when I first pulled this off so I'm trying to get this collar down because I think in my excitement I let it get pushed up a little bit and let's just see I'm gonna mess with this a little bit I'm gonna troubleshoot Okay, let's see. Okay. Where's my barrel? Let's see what happens. Oh no. It's even worse than before. What the heck is going on? Hmm. Let me think about this a little bit. Let me figure out why this is not retracting all the way back. And we'll come back and I'll let you know what I have figured out. And I think I solved it. So let it be out. It's out. I can snorkel. I can pull it back. It seats itself very nicely. So the, the thought process I had was I think I was kind of incorrect. Like this may have been lower down a little bit, but it didn't really make any sense why that should be the thing. Because, I mean, if that's allowing it to be as pushed up as far as, that's more of the stop as far out as it gets. The thing that lets it come back is it needs to be pulled, right? And so it's either this tube tracking along this little spiral on here. And, I mean, it's only going to spiral as much as tension as and as, as this gives it and it was pretty tight the whole time the way around like i'm feeling boom and then snorkels out and i'm catching right away i can feel the tension and i can screw 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 so this is only going to allow me to go up as far as i as far as will let me and i don't think that was a limitation so what i wound up doing is considering that oh maybe my snorkel depth is incorrect and i think probably somewhere along the way my snorkel had lost its adhesion or adherence into the little nipple section so what i wound up doing is rechecking is i wound up pulling it out and re at the bottom based on where this thing retracted fully and then I would find the depth and make sure that that would seat enough to kind of become flush with this. So I really just played around with the depth of the snorkel and I think it's okay um, ultimately uh, because one, I think this mechanism is working well and then when I push it all the way through, line it up, oops. I missed it. There we go. I get it. It does come beyond the tip. So I think that is 
an appropriate depth. So I can definitely dip that in the ink. It'll soak up and then it'll come back and sit right where it was. And that allows it to come back just until there. And then it really comes out. So that to me was the, was the solution I, I hit upon. So it's resetting the snorkel depth. Because otherwise, this is the spring. Really just kind of pushing that out and get, letting that only come back so far. And I think that's it. So before we do the filling, I'm gonna let all the shellac on this sit. There we go. We get a good, nice distance out. And I can pull it back in and get it back to beautifully flush. So I'm gonna let all the shellac set, the shellac that's now resetting the snorkel into the little nipple section. I've got the shellac that's on the sack and then we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of writing sample. So thank you for again, hanging with me while I troubleshot something and I hope this serves you in the future, but we'll be back with a PFM. And welcome back. It's been about 12 hours. I came back the next day, let everything kind of sit for a while. And here we have the final product. Just got done with the Renaissance wax, so it has extra shine to it, but I think this pen turned out really well. Let me see if I do the zoom in, see if it's gonna freak out too much. But let's kind of go over the pen a little top to bottom. So we have this nice gold filled cap. And I'm gonna say at the top, I think it's kind of a little indented um, right there. I think it should be flat, so that's a little bit of a dent. But we have the nice Schaefer spring clip. We have this nice kind of box-shaped top a little bit. We have these facets that just kind of smooth down into more of the rounded barrel that has these vertical lines on it, just kind of a different pattern, like a long one, short one, long one, short one. In between we have the nice gold. Now there are, and I'm not going to try to focus too much because it might give you a headache, but there are very small, uh, maybe I say that but maybe I'll try, very small little bits where some of the plating has, mm -mm. no, yeah I'll try, okay, well, where the plating has kind of come off and there's a little bit of rustiness, but very small spots. I mean, you can't, they almost look like grain a little bit, but yeah, I'll try. But anyway, kind of little spots like that, but nothing crazy. Like if you're not looking, you're probably not gonna see it, but if you're paying any kind of attention, you'll start to see them. And I think there was a small dent. Maybe I'm making it up. Maybe I'm just confusing the top. As I look over, over it, I don't really see a dent I thought I had seen before, so maybe this is it for now. At the bottom we also have shavers and made in USA. Yeah, surface is still a little bit, you know, you see the wear on this guy. Let's wipe him down a little bit. But it shines up nicely and most of the gold plate's intact. So overall, not a bad pen cap. We can take him off, he just pulls off. And let's make sure you're dry on the inside. We have this nice inlaid nib. It says Schaefer's 14K. I think maybe there's an R or a trademark there. And at the bottom, it just says USA right there. But we have a little bit of the plastic kind of peeping through. And it looks like we're probably gonna get a mediumish nib out of this or a large fine is my guess. We have the hood or the cone unit, the nose unit, the section, whatever you want to call it, because it's kind of hard to determine um, what to call it. We have our nice feed with our snorkel that comes out nice and smoothly. And we can kind of see the little plastic channel on the inside of it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't like a white background. There we go. It's got a nice tip on it. We'll take them back in. And, I mean, the plastic polished up really well. I hope you can kind of go back and see just how beat up the barrel and the hood were before. And that we can come all the way down here to the turning knob and has a little kind of gold-filled finial on it. 
and this one is what kind of denotes it. This and the gold fill cap kind of makes this a PFM5. And we can show you the nice plunger. You can hear the sound. So overall, I am super happy with this. I'll zoom back out and I'll show you another one that, you know, when I had just left, I, I had wondered, you know, if I had set that at the right depth and I just kind of used the the flushness with this feed to kind of make sure it, it was at the right depth to kind of get it to retract fully. Because um, what we have here, and maybe this is a better explanation, but if I take off the barrel, I can see that, yes indeed, I'm pr like, this is all the way fully up at the top. So this mechanism and is doing its job in threading down here and allowing that to push forward. So I could not get that um, to to come back or, or to go forward anymore. And I, I imagine that if I pull this back, it might allow it to, actually, let's try that. No, actually that, yeah, no, it stops itself because this is stopping it can only go so far so I think I'm happy with how that is set and when I take out another PFM that I have I have one of my own collection let's go push all the way out this is my PFM 3 that I fixed up some years ago and if I take out the snorkel on this one make sure it's all the way out and I just kind of compare the two that's about right they come out just the right. So yeah, I think my assumption that my snorkel had somehow kind of got loose within that um, shellac kind of nipple was, was correct because I was able to get it and it looks just like this other one that did not have that issue. So I, th I think I'm happy with that. And I'll, I'll show you this guy in a second. But let's go ahead and see if we can write a little bit and just talk about the PFM. It's, it's so hard to want to hold this pen just because it's so fresh, clean, and waxed up that I keep seeing all my little fingerprints on it. So I went ahead and chose a nice little Schaefer black ink. Kind of works. And I like this particular bottle because I can look down in my drawer where my inks are and I just know by the shape of that bottle that that's my Schaefer black ink. So we're going to do the usual. We're going to extend the snorkel. I'm going to see how full this is. Oh, and this one's almost empty. It's a good thing for a snorkel. So I'm going to dip it down, and we're going to see if we can get the bubbles. Maybe I kind of scraped at the bottom, but we'll see. Hopefully that's enough ink to have sucked up. So we'll let it sit for about 10 seconds while the bladder fills. And there we go, ink on the snorkel. None on the nib. Uh-oh, is that me? I think that's from earlier. That's not that's not fresh. But we'll take this back down. And just for the sake of it, I'm gonna just dab it on the cloth. But we'll see how much it filled afterwards. Because now this is not a dipped nib, so if it writes it means it filled. Let's talk about the PFM. Haha. -ha. PFM. There we go. Let's see if I can zoom in so we can see. There we go, maybe. BFM. I'm gonna hold it right there. Apparently it does not like white. Okay, well right here for a second. So quick search, most websites kind of say the same thing, that these came out in about 1959. And they were kind of a a take on the snorkel filler, of course. Snorkel filler. Um, and this is kind of like in a time period where Parker, the 51, still selling really well. Um, Schaefer has success with the snorkel fillers, the thin models and all those kinds of good things that people tend to, tend to really enjoy. And so they're trying to set themselves apart. And so while every other pen seemed to be going the route of slim and slender, they decided let's kind of reinvent or take a step back and they went big. Um, they just made everything larger and they actually came out with a few, um, uh, maybe they're innovations, but they kind of put a few more features on this that kind of made this uh, more than just a big fat pen, right? So this had the 
inlaid nib, and from what I read, this may have been, I think this was the first time the inlaid nibs were used or were presented to the world. And so this now has become kind of a Schaefer calling card and other things have, have done it too. So inlaid versus, rather than having a hooded nib, that was a big thing. Um, what else did they do? Of course, they had the snorkel. Oops, snorkel. They had the big size. They kind of redesigned their clip. So it's still kind of got the Schaefer um, spring clip, but it's big, kind of rectangular, and it's gonna catch it, catch the shirt and be a little bit more secure rather than, you know, maybe just having a little bit of metal to kind of crimp onto the shirt. So we'll say a larger clip, but still springy. Yep, and was there anything else? I thought there was, it might come to me in a second. So, and of course, they, let's call it the big size, hence this is the pen for men, so that's, you know, it's man-sized. Um, it's, you know, you can grip it with large hands. And even just the kind of rectangular features on it just kind of made it squared off and a little bit more masculine um, than, than pens that were kind of going around at the time. So they came out in different, I'm going to pull up my phone because I have them listed rather than rely on my memory, five different lines and cleverly they're labeled one through five, right? So it all kind of depended on the material and the trim options, right? So one, two, three, four, five. So if we go nib, material, and we'll go trim, this is how they kind of get uh, divided up. So I'm gonna use an abbreviation, um, palladium, Silver, so PDAG. If you ever heard PDAG, that's palladium silver nib, and the first two palladium silver. So the PFM one and two, and I'll double check. Yes, three, four, five are fourteen carat, fourteen carat, fourteen carat. Of course, I should say I'll say cat material because the barrels were all plastic, but you might have found like an occasional metal barrel or something like that. But the caps were. Plastic. And I'm going to double check my chart. Plastic. Here we go. For the one, the stainless steel for number two. And then, of course, we go back to plastic for the number three. I don't know why I said, of course, that shouldn't be obvious. And then we have a stainless steel cap with gold cap band. And this has the gold filled cap. Let me go move this over here. And we'll say the trim option and I'll double check. Um, just kept it stainless steel. So the first one was st stainless steel. The second one looks like stainless steel as well, which makes sense. This one had 14K gold filled trim in terms of a cap band and clip. Um, let's see, number four, also kind of same thing for this one. We'll just do the little quote marks. And then, of course, gold filled cap, also gold trim. So. And this one is of note, had the gold trim here, but also had the little gold tassie. That's why I can say this is a PFM5. We'll say plus gold filled tassie, if that's gonna be the right word. We'll say end plate tassie, whatever, whatever we wanna call it. So this is the quick and dirty way of doing it. There are plenty of charts online to kind of help you identify what yours is. And they came in some usual colors. We had the black, we had blue, I think I saw gray, green, and burgundy. There we go. 
So we had all those kinds of options. And apparently, there is one that is special to the PFM3 line in the fact that the cap band was 14 karat gold, not filled. And this was the autograph. So that was meant for initials and initials or you know your name or, or something on it so that was kind of customizable but apparently these are a little harder to find so more of a collector's item but you can probably get pfm threes galore they're all all over the place uh so that's kind of it and this this line apparently was not super successful at the time I'm not sure why. Maybe just because people were moving to the ballpoint pens. Um, maybe Schaefer misjudged people's wanting of a big fat pen. So I'm gonna scooch out just a little bit. Um, but I think as time went on, people have found a good love of these pens. And so it actually can get a little bit pricey just for these plastic pens. So you can spend anywhere from 200 to 400 dollars on some of these suckers with the colors and like if there's a pencil set you know maybe even more pricey but um decently collectible so if you find a decent one that you know you can get for cheaper and use this video to help kind of um repair it up you might be able to save a little bit of money um but what do i think about this guy so far oh and i guess so they finally not successful so they kind of phased things out and by 1968 they called it kaput. So that's that's kind of when they disappeared, sadly. Um, what else? Okay, now, now let's get on to actually talking about what I'm feeling as I'm writing this guy. So I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty right. This does feel like a medium line. And it's actually pretty smooth as a smooth writer. And I think one good thing about these inlaid nibs I don't really have often, maybe just a couple times, I've ever found, found them to be out of alignment. Um, and I'll call this Rhodia paper. There might be an H in there. I'm not sure. I forget. What does this say? Or H O T I A? Yep. My bad. I just looked wrong. Rhodia paper. So it's pretty smooth. I like it. Um, there's a little bit of a feedback sensation, but it's definitely not scratchy. And. Let's see if this guy is a wet writer or not. It's medium, it's a Schaefer black ink. Mm, a little wet, but not terrible. It's not taking forever to streak out. And it lays down, it seems like it dries pretty quickly. Yeah, not too bad. And this is a Schaefer, it's an inlaid nib. It's not gonna have much flexibility or anything at all. And that's me putting some good pressure by this one. So you maybe squeeze out just a hair, but it's not really meant to be springy or um, flexible by any means. And we can do a little figure eight just to show that you get a little bit of widening, but again, not, not, not a flexi pen. And can we do some, ooh, some scratchy reverse writing. Not a reverse writer in my opinion. That was digging into the paper. Not pleasant at all, but right side up very nice and let's see if I were to go fast it's keeping up and there's a little bit of maybe it could just be the ink but there seems to be a little bit of variation like it's wanting to kind of skip like little spots like that so maybe but I think it's a decently decent writer that'll keep up with you I don't know what I'm writing there but yeah, it kind of does little things, and this might be something I maybe I'm just going to have to take a little brass sheet, get in between the tines. Maybe this is my fault during the cleaning. Maybe there's a little bit of stuff in there, but I'll sort that one out. And anything else to say about it? I'm not, not entirely sure. I mean, I like the fact that this is a big, fat pen, and that reminds me that maybe I can do some measurements with you guys. Let's pull out the, the ruler. So if we go inches if I can do it capped we're gonna look at right at about just over five and a quarter so five and five 
eighths or something like, or sixteenths, I guess. Yeah, something like that. And then we can go uncapped. I'm trying to line up that little tassie. That's where I'm measuring it from. This comes to just shy of four and three quarters of an inch. So not terrible at all. And let's see if we can do a little bit of posting. Because you don't definitely need to. This, even unpost, like this is very comfortable in my average kind of five foot nine hand. My hand's not five feet nine, but I am. And so this sits nicely in the crook. I got a little bit of wiggle room. If I want to be a far back rider, I can squeeze up on it a little bit. But as a relaxed hand, it fits really well there. But if I don't want the pen top flying around or losing it, post super deep. That's actually kind of nice. Look how deep that posts in there. Boom. So that's going to be a nice for the weight. It, so that's, I can feel the little bit of added weight. I mean, if it's a plastic cap, I bet this is going to be so negligible. Um, but for now, this does add a little bit of weight. It's not pulling it. It's kind of nicely centered deep into the pen, so it really doesn't throw off the, the center of gravity to it. So I don't think I would mind this being capped in my hand. But knowing that this is such a nice finish, I don't have to post it, probably one that I prob personally wouldn't worry about posting. And what else can we say about it? I think that's it. I mean, I, I, I again, love shavers, love the dependability of them, the well-madeness of them, and fantastic. Now I'm just gonna show the PFM3, just kind of show that um, this has the gold trim, gold cap band trim, it is nice and springy still. We've got the white dot, and this is gold filled. I'm wondering if it says it on there, but it doesn't say anything about the gold, but I imagine this is gold filled because it seems like a thin plate. So not an autograph, sadly. And we have the 14 karat inlaid nib on this guy. Hopefully the color's coming through. And we do not have any kind of tassie down here. So this puts me at a PFM3 as well. Okay, well, let's do, before I forget, let's, I know I've written with it for a little bit. Let's see if we can evacuate any ink. And this might not have filled super fully because I, I barely have any ink in there. So we'll see how full it filled. But, and I'll, I'll tell you one thing. So, I'm going to open this upwards because as soon as you open it up for the vacuum, it does tend just to spill the ink. So I'm going to open it upwards so that we can get the ejection. My own camera, yep. Yeah, it might not have filled all the way, but I'll show, it, I'll show you what I mean. If I can find a little pocket of ink. Well, that's it for about 10 seconds. That should be good. So, if I were to break the vacuum, if I were going to go refill my pen or do anything with it, just be aware that this is already unscrewed. I haven't like, tightened it down, but if I pull back, see, it just loses the ink. It kind of loses the vacuum, and it does just spill out. So, and here I can push a little bit more out. So, be aware when filling. If you just want to top it off, um, maybe hold it upright, or just go ahead and hold it over the ink because you're going to lose it. Just, just as a note of caution. But let's go ahead and let me stop rambling about this one. And let me see if I can decide which one I'm going to um, do for next time. I know I, I talked about a few pens and see, what am I feeling? How old, how vintage do I go? I kinda wanna do this one. I think I'll commit to doing this. This is a safety pen and we can screw it all the way up. Actually, I was, no, no, I was going to say it doesn't have a good seal, but no. If I just put a little bit of pressure, it's just going to zip right back in. So that lets me know that the kind of seal, the cork seal in here, that keeps it kind of tight up against the front to keep the ink in is no good. So we're going to take this completely apart, um, do recork it, and hopefully do a fill. And I'm always nervous um, about these pens, but I think this is a very cool... A uh, red modeled one. It is, is it a brand that I can tell? It's there. I'd have to, we'll talk about it later. Oh, there it is. 
it's faded and I can't tell it's not like a super well-known brand that I can name but we're gonna do a safety pin next time and we're gonna maybe show a couple different options but we'll at least do this one get it going do a writing sample and then I think I'm gonna stay super vintage maybe do my uh, more uh, non leakable pen this guy that I was like, super excited to do so we're gonna stick with safety pens for a little bit so thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time. Like, comment, let me know things you like, things you don't. I really need to kind of revamp how I do these videos, maybe script them out better and think about getting into some better equipment. But um, yeah, and also make these things shorter. But I think, well, I'll, I'll be thinking about that. Leave me comments, let me th know things that you'd like to see, not like to see, how I can, can shape this up a little bit. So I will talk at you next time.